Before you watch this video, I have a quick announcement for you. We are live right now on twitch.tv slash Mogden. And if you want to join us, you just have to scroll down to the comment section and click the link in the pinned comment. Once you've done that, boom, you're in the live stream. Thank you so much for listening. Now back to the video. Let me ask you this. Do you want to be able to do this right here? Well, my friend, I have the build that can do just that for you right here. And it's part of our series in which we're trying to showcase every single weapon that's viable for solo players. Today, we're going to be focusing on a PvE speed clearing weapon that anybody can use it doesn't really need high spec but it does require a little bit high IP if you want to be able to one shot the mobs however it's not really that expensive for what this build can do and you don't really need to one shot the mobs you can just brawl them a little bit it's still gonna work in 4.1 now a little bit of a disclaimer if you care about other gauntlet builds well then we have a full playlist for this so just go and check it out and you're gonna be able to see everything over there pve builds pvp builds escape sets whatever is available for you as a solo player in the gloves weapon line the build that we're gonna be showcasing today goes like this mage cow with this ability and this passive right here you want to have cortis rope third ability first passive you want to have any played shoes though i kind of recommend that you go with soldier because sometimes it's useful to swap this but as a default you want to stay on the second ability and second passive with avalonian cape tedford cape or demon cape i wouldn't really recommend demon avalonian for me was the sweet sweet spot but you might prefer tedford beef stew for food or pork omelets in case you feel like you have enough damage for me the sweet spot was with beef stew but you could also go with pork omelets if you want faster cooldowns you want to have invisibility potions as a default and some tier 4 poisons in case you're facing a boss and the infamous spiked gauntlets with the second Q first W ideally you want to have the last passive but you can also go with the first one I'm showing it with the first one so you can have like a low spec variant of this do not aim for my exact tier aim for this IP now this IP can be achieved by either having spec with this tier or having a higher tier with no spec aim for 1.2k IP as a default in case you want to one shot the bombs again it works with lower IP as well now let me quickly just walk over every single ability so First of all, starting with the Q. The Q offers you a little bit of a dash. If you manage to hit this Q, it's going to trigger the second stage, which deals a little bit of damage, just like the first Q, and also throws the enemy in the air, interrupting spell casting. The W looks like this. If you target a player with this, which by the way, you're not going to do that, you're going to drag the player along, dealing a lot of damage to him. If you just target mobs, you're just going to pass through them, dealing damage to them. That's how it looks like. Alright. Then you have the E. This is the meat and potatoes of this build. You can target more enemies with it and boom, you do a massive attack dealing 1000 damage after resistances, after everything. It's an insane ability that can wipe groups. Especially if you pair it up with the Cortis Robe, which by default, by the way, this is something that not a lot of people know about. The reason I'm recommending Cortis Robe is not just the ability, but also the stats. This boosts your physical attack bonus by 50% if it wasn't the enchanted version. Like, for example, if I go with Cleric Robe, this gives me a 45% boost in magic attack bonus, physical attack bonus, and stuff like that. If I go with Cultist, it gives me a 50%. Now, the same bonus is given to you on the Mage Robe, which is much, much cheaper. The reason I'm recommending this, however, is because the ability also helps. Talking about the ability, this is what your Robe does. It makes you channel healing your HP and your mana. Afterwards, it goes on a pretty long cooldown, so you want to use this after the fight. Your helmet, you shoot basically a fire wave or you start breathing fire towards the enemies, lighting them on fire, dealing dot damage every second, and your F makes you move fast and restores a little bit of HP over a certain duration of time. Now, the general rotation that you want to have with this build is pretty straightforward. Clamp the mobs, eat the mobs. Literally, that's it. If the mobs are still alive, then go towards them with your W or auto-attack them to trigger the Avalonian Cape. That looks like this. It triggers once every 30 seconds. It reduces the damage that enemy does. And it also makes it so that it deals AoE damage all around. Because of the ramp-up period of the Cape, you could actually just hit it and then run. Again, it's a pretty, pretty rare thing to happen, like to miss the Avalonian Cape, but it can entirely happen, which is why some people prefer Tedford Cape. Also, Tedford Cape has a 15 seconds cooldown, whereas the Avalonian Cape has a 30 seconds cooldown. So you also want to keep track about that. Now, if somebody comes towards you, if you meet an 8.3, well, you can also get away very easily by using your Q, your W, and even your invisibility potion just to stay safe. Now, with that out of the way, that's about everything you need to know about this build, at least from a technical point of view. But let's also put it in practice so I can show Showcase it from a practical point of view. Check it out. Oh, look at this. This is going to be good. 
Are you guys ready for some good stuff? Boom! That was that was something. It's for moments like these that I'm using this build. Come on, get closer, but I just like this. Boom! And they all melt. They all disappear. Come on, get here. This is so satisfying just to watch them all melt before you. The only mobs that are really problematic are actually the archers. The archers are always going to be a pest. <laughs> sniped. I actually sniped. I'm impressed. That was that was beautiful. And that's why I want to have Coltis Robe. Multitasking right now. Hey, that's good. Boom! I love this so much. Just watching the mobs melt before you. I don't know. It's the most satisfying, most satisfying thing. Come on. Come on. Right, chat? Oh, wait. Will I be able... Okay. I think those guys will aggro. That's perfect. I want to pull them over here. So I wipe the tower out as well. And boom. Melted. Melted. I love this. I wish I could have caught this as well. I should have I should have positioned myself in a way to allow me to catch that as well. That would have been much, much better. I don't know why I didn't do that. Gather up, gather up, gather up, and boom! One shot! So satisfying, chat. I cannot get over how satisfying that feels. Who needs Invis Pots when you can just wipe out the whole squad of mobs in one shot? Boom! Oh, come on, you damned archer. Why are you ruining my clumps? Chat, let's see if we can pull off one of those beauties. Come on, just get... Okay, no, I won't be able to pull the boss as well. Or, or... That was unintentional, but that worked out. That really worked out, actually. That was beautiful. I did not think that that would touch the boss. But I'm glad it did. I'm glad it did. Double chest. Come on. Okay. At least one chest. That's not bad. We're getting a lot of money from the Nightfall Abbey. I mean, in general. Not now. But You play with randoms in HCE, but you need to be careful because some tanks don't pull properly. So, wait. Random hardcore expeditions actually work? Like, doing it with randoms? Because from what I've heard, it's one of the most gatekeeped content out there. Like, if you want to do it properly, with a proper team, you have no chance. If you don't know somebody, or if your dog does not know somebody's dog that knows somebody's aunt, that knows somebody that's playing Hardcore Expeditions to the highest level, good luck getting in there. Good luck getting in there. Chat, 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 chat. Boom! I love that. I don't know if I'm the only one, but I love. Now, while this build can absolutely wipe out groups of mobs in PvE, well, it's kind of an expensive build, isn't it? Like, it's worth it. It's very satisfying to play around with, but it is like 500k. What if you want to do PvE just as effectively, but with a much cheaper set? Well, then you might want to check out this video right here that's going to showcase a much cheaper set that works just as fine. Check it out. You might really like it. It's like 30k. Come on, just click it. Come on, just click the video, come on!